You're watching Greater Brockton. Mark Linder, your host, and I have one of my fan favorites, Lynn Smith. <laughs> Lynn, welcome. Nice Thank to see you, you today. Thank uh, you, Good to see you. Um, well. We were talking about an event in the earlier episode of Greater Brockton um, that's on September 20th, and you have a new event to tell us about. So we do. Tell us. We have an event the same day. It's the 20th of September at the beautiful War Memorial Building on West Elm Street and it starts at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And this all started because a small group of folks who live, work and worship around Frederick Douglass Avenue mm -hmm. brought back that little plot of land and it's now a sort of a, an enjoyable flower garden. And we started to talk about Frederick Douglass and his connection to Cape Verde mm -hmm. and Haiti and Ireland and women and veterans because of the service of his sons in the 54th Massachusetts. And we took that story and we spun it into a grant request to Mass Humanities and we got the grant. Okay, now what's the name of the event? The event is called Stride Toward Freedom Together. And the reason we named it that is Dr. King's book about the Montgomery bus boycott mm -hmm. is called Stride Toward Freedom. So we said, hmm, you know, Frederick Douglass, most likely when he lived in New Bedford, worked with Cape Verdean um, shipbuilders. We know he served as minister to Haiti. We know he stood next to Susan B. Anthony and fought for women's right to vote and for equality. And we know he went over to Ireland and stood next to Daniel O'Connell, the liberator, the emancipator, who fought for... Catholic emancipation, the right of Catholics to hold office in Ireland, and also he wanted a free Ireland separate from England. He never quite got there. Mm -hmm. And we said, you know, it's interesting how Frederick Douglass connects all of these different ethnicities that are so prevalent in Brockton mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. And we thought, what a great way to get the uh, community together, learn about some of these countries' icons and heroes, and maybe compare notes and, and establish some common ground. Well, if you think about what Brockton has always been all about, mm -hmm. it's a city of immigrants, it's mm -hmm. a city of all different cultures that are all kind of woven very nicely together, mm -hmm. and there's a common link. I mean, I personally think it's brilliant, yeah. okay? Not to mention, it's hard to get grants. It's it not is. easy to get grants. You're very thorough, Lynn. You, <laughs> Thank you, 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 you know, you, you dig. You, you do your homework. You get it done, and the community benefits. I, I know we were back in the World War about a year ago, and I think it was the Mass, Mass Humanities. Mass Humanities. Yep. They came to Brockton. They hadn't come to Brockton for years, and yep. you got them to come here, and now we have a great program. So. What does it cost to go to the program? This is a free program. It's absolutely free, and there will be light refreshments at the end of it. But what we're really excited about is all of the different groups that are involved with it. You know, when we did the reading of Frederick Douglass's speech back around the 4th of July, What is the Slave to the 4th of July? There were eight or ten readings throughout Massachusetts that Mass Humanities supported, but we were the only community that read it in three languages. Mm -hmm. We had folks from the Haitian community partners in Shoup read it in Haitian Creole. We had members of the Cape Verdean Association read it in Cape Verde Creole, and we read it in English. So this panel that we have that's going to talk about the connections between our heroes come from the disparate ethnicities of our city as well. I don't know if you know Dr. Joe Arosa. I sure do. He's an amazing historian, Bridgewater State University, and he's the executive director of the Pedro Perez Institute for Cape Verdean Studies. So he's going to be our expert on Amilka Cabral, an amazing freedom fighter, an icon in Cape Verdean history. Lee Farrow, is going to come from Stonehill College. She teaches women's studies, women's leadership, African American studies, community organizing. She was one of the early founders of the Harlem Children's Zone, mm. which was a renaissance in Harlem around education in that area. 
Charlot Lucien is going to be our expert on Toussaint Louverture, the black Napoleon, mm -hmm. the man who led the revolt in Haiti. And uh, Charlot Lucien was a founder of the Haitian Artists Assembly. And then, of course, if we're going to talk about Frederick Douglass, we have to have Willie Wilson there. Absolutely. And he's going to be on our panel. So we're going to ask the audience to pose the question to the panel. How did these different civil rights leaders deal with justice issues, injustice issues? How were they prepared to do what they did? How did they overcome obstacles? What obstacles do we have in Brockton that we have to deal with and can we learn from these icons so that we can better negotiate this social contract between us so that we're more engaged and more involved in our community. And from that conversation, mm -hmm. we're going to put interpretive signs into the Douglas Garden that will tell the story of all of these historic figures. And of course, you know my favorite people, the students at Southeastern right. Regional Votech, made the signs for us. Oh, there you go. But we're not going to put the design on the signs until the people in the audience help tell us what they want to see in terms of their story. So as you go through downtown Brockton, you'll be able to go into the garden and learn about all of these great, great historic characters. Now, all of this information, knowing you, has to be posted someplace. Where is it? Yep, we have a website, douglasbrockton.org, two S's in Douglas, so douglasbrockton.org. We also have a Facebook page, the Frederick Douglas, two S's, Neighborhood Association, so it's all up there. My posters are at the printer this weekend, so starting on Monday, we will start to distribute them. So I'm really asking Brockton, this is a very prestigious grant. You know, the Mass Humanities is a part of the National Endowment for the Humanities that President Lyndon Johnson formed mm -hmm. in 1965. And so they use history and art and philosophy to talk about the issues of the day. So please, please come and be a part of this conversation in the audience. And I'm going to say we're going to be there, but it's not an excuse for people not to come. You can see it later, but you have to live it live and you have to go. You do fabulous programs right. with your group. It's a wonderful opportunity for Brockton. You get great speakers and mm -hmm. we're looking forward to it. So it's on a calendar. It's a busy day that day. We're, we're going to start in the morning and then we'll finish in the afternoon and then, then we'll relax in the evening. That's right. That's right. Okay. And you know, for young adults and for students, they're the ones that are doing the research. They're the ones that are going to prepare short videos so people will learn about the life of O'Connell and Cabral and Louvachor. Also, Edward Bennett, you know, our Brockton abolitionist and our Underground Railroad stop here. So it's a wonderful opportunity for us to learn about each other, learn about each other's cultures, and share the history with the young adults of the city. I could talk to you all day about this. Lynn, thank you for coming on. I you appreciate it. Thanks September 20th. September 20th. September 20th. Uh, it be down at the War Memorial at 2 o'clock.